Praise God. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. If you'd like to be a part of our ministry, please call us or go to our website. El si quieres estar parte de ese ministerio, por favor, háblalos. 281-685-0542. Praise God. This is Evangelist Michael Fernandez. This is awesome. The things God is doing in, in these last days, uh, People are getting involved in, uh, with the community, and, uh, and uh, we're involved in helping the homeless at Fish and Bread and other ministries, uh, different departments from our church has got involved. And I'm so grateful for people like that. Uh, and today we have a guest here, the Bright's family, and it's going to be Sherry Bright and Richard Bright, who's also been helping us uh, at Fish and Bread when they are able to. I know their schedule. But I praise God for people who are dedicated and in getting involved with the community. Uh, and I thank God. And I appreciate Richard and, and Sherry Bright and uh, that you're here as a guest. Praise the Lord. And God bless you. Michael, thank you always and for having us. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and tell us something about what you are doing today, uh, Mrs. Sherry. Uh, what are you doing today? What's the latest thing you are doing? In the are you talking about the... TV show that we just found out about? Or were yes. You, uh -huh. oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, that, just jumping right in there. <laughs> well, we're really excited because we uh, just recently found out that we have been asked, us and four of my close girlfriends, to be on a new show that's going to be on cable TV, and it's about Christian moms and their families. And we don't know all the details yet, but we know that we got chosen out of, I don't know how many different groups of women, but they chose us to, to do it, and so... We're going to get on the details soon. And Praise the Lord. That's Absolutely. an honor. And you, Richard, it, you would never have thought that this was going to ever occur. You know, Michael, truthfully, 10 years ago, I never would have thought that. You know, I would have thought that we would have to get out and just scratch and claw and just fight our way to get every little thing that, would, that God had in store for us uh, and not knowing the relationship and, uh, and not knowing God on a personal level. Uh, to know that we could just lay back and just understand that if we just come with prayer and to just give all of our, 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 our heart and our soul and our life to God, that He takes care of all of our dreams. Amen. And we don't have to do anything behind the scenes. He's working on it behind the scenes for us. And I see the favor of God on y'all and, and how God took the ashes and change it into beauty. Amen. You know, Satan tried to destroy your marriage, but God restored your marriage. Not only that, you're able to help people in that they're having the same problems or similar problems in marriage. And praise God, God has raised you for a time like this when divorce is, is just going through all America and all over the world like... Uh, well, let's get married. Even the celebrities today, you get married for four months and <laughs> then get married That's with me. another one. It's just like changing socks. Right. Right. And, and they've they lost the value of marriage. And, yeah. and Sister Sherry, share something of your history about your marriage. Well, God definitely took our mess and made it our message. Um, Richard and I have been together a little over 10 years. We were, well, we were married 10 years. I guess we were ghetto married for two, as they say on the street. <laughs> <laughs> ghetto we, marriage living together. Yeah, we lived together for two years. That was before, before Christ. And um, we have a blended family. When we, Richard and I met each other, I had a daughter that was graduating high school, and his daughter was graduating from preschool. So God has a sense of humor because Praise he let me start all over again. And... Um, we just started, we had $7 in the Lone Star card. We were broke. We were broken. Uh, and like I said, he took our mess and, and he made it, you know, made it our message. We started going to church at, at Lakewood. We saw it on TV and we watched it for quite a while on television and then decided that we would try to go. And once we started going, we started going to marriage classes and then just little by little, you know, we don't have a story that God just delivered us all in one day. Our story wasn't like that. It was like a that. process. Mm -hmm. It was a process. It was a working process. And and how long have you been going to Lakewood, Ms. Sherry? Uh, nine you know? years that we've been nine going years. there. And we've been serving there for a little over seven years. Praise God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're now you turn around and you're able to help someone else in the situation. What do you think about, if I'm just, I hope I'm not throwing something just in there, the people who are living together 
and they use this uh, cop out uh, uh, saying that, well, Adam and Eve didn't have a marriage certificate, so why do I have to get married? Uh, what do you say to people like that in your group? What I like to do, and this is just truthful because this is what I what I tell folks when, when they say that, is that I hear so many times, Michael, couples say, well, let's just live together, and if we can work things out and we're able to work through our issues and um, be able to understand one another, then we'll know that that is the... Um, the information that we need to get married. We'll know that that's going to be what it's going to take to get married. But when I see that, I, I tell them, I said, do you really think that the enemy, now that you're, you're living together and you're not under the protection and the covenant of God and mm -hmm. under his protection that way, I said, you're living in a sin, so God doesn't bless sin. Do you really think that the enemy, the devil, is going to actually let you sit back and work things through so that you can see that, hey, you know what, we can work this through. Now we get married. The devil is going to do everything he can to keep that marriage from happening. And, and a, uh, a, a, a fact and a statistic that's hard to believe is 85% of the women who live, 85% uh, of the people who live together, the woman will never see a ring. All right? she yes. will, they will never get married. Um, and that, those are just um, some statistics that are, just, that, that, uh, that are true that, man, we can't deal with. I mean... Uh, people need to understand that, the, the, that marriage is a protective holy covenant of God uh, and that people are to get married to become one to serve Christ. Amen. And, and people, you know, tell us a lot. They'll say, well, you guys live together, you know, and why it's a, it was a... made it. Yeah, and y'all made it. But they don't understand is that we put the, we put the work into it. We, we've, it's, it's been a struggle. It's been a, it's been a, you know, step-by-step -step process, and now I think we're finally starting to see that we finally got to the top of the hill, and not by any means are we where we want to be, but we are, we just did step-by-step -step until we could get past the the muck and the, you know, just all the stuff that we were in, and, and if we had to do it over again, we wouldn't have lived together. We know now we would have done things differently, but um, we also had, uh, were you going to say something? I was just going to say, there are so many times, Michael, and I'm sure you can attest to this, that you will see people who were in bad marriages who stuck with it and worked their way through their problems, worked their way through it, prayed their way through these issues, um, and did it the way God wanted them to do that, that they restored their marriages tenfold. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it all the time. I know couples who um, the, the husband had more girlfriends than, than um you know, in a marriage that the wife uh, had an affair. Uh, we, we've, we have couples that their children had passed away, but they, stu they, they stood to what God said, that he would renew them, he would renew their marriage, and then he would, he would take their, their heartache and turn it into joy and into a reason and, and, and explain to them, you know, what happened so that they can understand that, that marriage was designed by God and it was for God, and as long as you stick to it, that God's going to bless your marriage. God yeah. wants to see some grit. He wants to see that you have some stick to itness. That you're just not going to give up like everybody else does, and just give up uh, when, in fact, that when when you stay and and you work through and you persevere, that's when the blessings come. Amen. You know, they say so many times that people get divorced within the first three to five years of being married. Mm -hmm. All right, but there's another statistic out there that says we stop living as we and start to live as me. No, nine to 14 years. It takes nine to 14 we, years on average to get there, but people leave them, uh, divorce themselves with, within three to five years. We'll start living, stop living as me and start living as right. we. That's right. what, what we're oh. saying. Yeah, we're together. <laughs> but, but, but you know, for us, it was. Um, it, like I said, it was just a process. And in the first, when we were so broken, when we first even started going to church, you know, it's not like, oh, well, the, it's easy for y'all. Y'all just started going to church and everything. We started going to church and we would stay up sometimes partying all night long and still just go straight to church. Just, but we just did it. We, little by little, we just went and um, somehow God just delivered us from all the things that, that were, were holding us back. I, we don't have a certain day. We don't have a day that says that this day we stopped and we started living for God. It just little by little, we look back and we don't even recognize our lives. Glory to glory. Glory to glory. Yep. You see, the scripture says, and it says, wake up to righteousness and sin not. Basically, when you wake up and know who you are in Christ, that you belong to the Heavenly mm -hmm. Father, you take on His nature and mm -hmm. you become part of His nature, His mm -hmm. DNA of love, joy, peace. And our spirit man is perfect, but our flesh 
and our, our soulish realm, it still has the residue of mm -hmm. the sin. Absolutely. And as you water yourself with the, with the word of God, you begin to grow and, and make your flesh and your soul to line up with your new creation. It's a process. It's a growing process. Mm -hmm. And praise God for God's grace. Yes, but we don't stay in the condition we used to be. If you were an alcoholic, if you were homosexual or whatever, you uh, grow in process because you become a brand new creature. And that's wonderful. Uh, we, and, had to, we had to get rid of things like our like certain friends that we hung around with. Yeah. You know, we had to, uh, we just had to change all the things about our old life to be able, because that was just, we were riding the fence at first. We would try to live this life with these people and still try to go to church. And, you know, after a while. And yeah. I wish we could tell people <laughs> that when you walk the fence, that blessing is being withheld from you. Right. You're not actually getting the, the full blessing. Right. Um, that the, the full blessing comes when you just give your heart and your soul and, and your mind and your body to Christ. Um, if we would have done that, it would have saved us six years of turmoil. You know, and I'm just trying, what we try to tell uh, these young couples that are getting married is submit yourself to Christ. Submit yourself to the Lord and, and make the changes now. Don't try to see and, and play the fence and, you know, wonder what faith is and wonder if you, if you give it to God and if you give it to Christ, will he show up or will he not show up? Christ is going to show up. Right. He's going to meet you at the level of your faith. Right. Praise the Lord. Well, you know, another thing I realized uh, in... I don't have to be a marriage counsel or a counsel, but uh, I know as Paul says in his scripture, he wasn't even married, but by the Spirit, God gave him revelation how Amen. to deal with issues with married couples or people who are in marriage, because the Holy Ghost knows everything, yeah. praise God. But thank God you got someone like you who's been there and done that to help others not make the same mistakes you make Absolutely. and helping them. Praise the Lord. And uh, what about these new wave? Uh, it's not new wave, but how they call swingers and having uh, you have a wife, but you're able to have a relationship with other couples. And and uh, you see some of those in the coming in too. The, and, and and I realized that because I had to counsel and know the scripture says that's a fornication. No, that's adultery. It's clear as day. There's a way to present the truth. The, according to the Word of God, and not compromising with sin, and and I could imagine you have all kinds of people coming into your yeah. classes. Haven't they want to enforce. Right. Uh, uh, it has has been done in secrecy. Yeah, yeah. Most yeah. of the yeah. things that we've had are couples that live together. You know, and okay. we we don't condemn people yet. We've had people say, you know, you need to tell them what the what the word says, and you need to beat them, you know, beat them over the head. And we no. don't do that. We no. love them, mm -hmm. and uh, we know our pastor loves people, and mm -hmm. uh, we know that the way to get for us the way if someone had done that to us, we would have been gone probably the first few uh -huh. times that we had gone, but they loved us at Lakewood. They right. didn't accept us the way they were. They just, I mean, they didn't condemn us. They just accepted us. They loved us. They didn't say it was okay, but they just kind of spoon fed it until we could get to a point to until where we, we could take it. And it then, yeah, okay. then we yes. knew we were doing yeah. the wrong thing. We knew we needed to, So you, know. you basically helped them to grow where they could be able to mature, to lay right. aside those yes. things. Yes, Because God makes it clear, look on to the author and the finish of our faith to lay aside every sin that easily beset us. And I praise God that you're doing You know, we that. also um, went through, you know, like I said, tough times, but then things got a lot better for us. You know, we started doing what they taught us at, at, in the marriage classes, and when they taught us what the Word said, and things started getting better. And, uh, and then we got hit with another bad season in our lives, you know, and now we know, you know, I guess why the the enemy was trying to take us out or trying to keep us from it because God had so much good for us. And we, we went through a time where we, like my, my sister died, both of my sisters died, my mother died, my father died, my brother died. I mean, we just went through this five years of really hard times, but because of what we had learned at church and we just had that peace uh, of God and we just trusted him no matter what, we got to see it through the other side. And, and now we know why the enemy was fighting us so hard because we had so many things we wanted to do about marriage and and teach other couples. And, yeah, and we just didn't harp on it, Michael. We didn't walk around and if somebody asked us, well, how are things going? You know, we didn't pull out a, oh, sit down. Let me explain. Let me tell you, you know, I hope you have a day to listen to all of our, our tragedy that's happening in our life. Uh, we just simply wouldn't talk about it. You know, we just said, you know what? It's unbelievable, you know, Amen. because it's just unbelievable. Praise um, God. And then we just, we just kept on keeping on. And 
you know, I see that now, and th that's what you know. I want to tell these younger couples. That's what I want to tell couples that are going through things right now. That um, I know for a fact that God has delivered them and answered prayers somewhere in their life. Somewhere in their life, they are, their prayers have been answered. Mm -hmm. And th you reach a point. Jensen Franklin says, "Mark it in a tree." You know, remember the times that you went to 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 God with prayer, and He took care of you, and He delivered you through that problem that you were having. And if he did it back then, he will do it now, and he'll do it in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, you can always count on God to deliver you and to, and to help you out, you know. Well, praise the Lord. I have another question. It's uh, not uh, regarding uh, same-sex marriage. What do you think about that it, according to the Word of God? You don't condemn the people, but what is the Scripture? What do you believe in? As a marriage counselor. You know, this is, it, it, it's, it's an easy question to answer, mm -hmm. but it's also a hard question to mm -hmm. answer because we have a lot of gay friends. Right. Uh, but the Bible says one man, one woman. Right. And we do whatever the Bible says to do. Right. Um, so it, it's a marriage between a man and a woman. Right. And, and, it, and it's hard to make that different. It, it, you know, sometimes we're like, oh, you know, well, the rights and the, um, you know, I feel that it, it's just, um, we have to do what the Bible says to do. Right, you know? I agree with you. And so, because I know, because I myself was delivered from homosexuality, transsexual, and I had a significant other, and I praise God that God taught me the truth about that is it is abomination to God. It is not God's will for a man to be married with a man, and uh, that's only one divorce that God does condone. Uh, but it's I, we don't condemn the homosexuals because I was in that area that lifestyle but praise God God delivered me yeah. and I'm glad that y'all are standing for the true gospel not half gospel Amen. and not compromising with sin and and praise God that y'all are doing God's will and promoting the love of God and I know the devil fights y'all oh, all the time yes. and we, and we know, still love our friends yeah we, love, yeah, we yeah, have yeah, yeah. Our yeah. people that we you love know? the yes. most but in the world it's, but it's not it's not our job right, to, to, to judge people right. and yeah. to condemn. That's, that's, and one sin's know. not worse than the other. We all right. sin. So, yeah. like, he cast the first, you know. Yeah, right. yeah that's wonderful. Uh, you share the love of God. Uh, like, for example, when I used to always tell the uh, friends that I used to know who owns the nightclubs, I'm not here to condemn you, but I tell them the true gospel and tell them in love, and I'm here for you. I don't disown you because... I don't see the same right. point of view, just like right. a Democrat, Republican, or Republican. We might have different opinions, but I stand this way, and I believe this way. Uh, uh, all I ask you, just respect me. I don't want to hear what you do with your significant other. You know, that's right. your private. <laughs> and uh, it's very important to share and preach the gospel and have love and understand. And I appreciate that, that you're doing that. And also, what do you recommend people... Uh, how can they get a hold of you if they want to get a hold of you, uh, Sherry? Um, they can go to marriagefanatics.com, mm -hmm. and that's marriagefanatics, F-U-N-A-T-I-C-S, uh, dot com. And then we're also on Facebook, which is Marriage Fanatics, uh, the Brights at Marriage Fanatics. And even though we're being very solemn here today, Richard and I usually do, well, all of our classes and the things we do are done with a lot of comedy and a lot of humor, um, we are typically humorous speakers, but you wouldn't know that today. <laughs> uh, but that's uh, that's how they can reach well, I us. I think there's there's different times. Yeah, and I guess there's a time for stuff. To, um, uh, uh, you know, there is. There's a time for stuff. And, uh, uh, and we just we, we, we want them to reach out because we just what we're trying to promote is you know Christian people are are just like anybody else. You know. Uh, and we, we don't want to put Christian people in a bad light. We don't want them to, you know, we don't want the world to look and say, well, you know what, um, you know, this is, I've made my decision because I have seen uh, Christian people uh, cast out people and denounce people. Um, that's not what Sherry and I are about. I mean, we're just about, uh, you know, just loving people, uh, sh sharing the Word of God, sharing the, the message uh, that God delivered us and He helped us through through thick and thin, and we were in a bad place in our marriage at one time, and now we're in a very good season in our marriage. Amen. Uh, but it didn't come with uh, not pushing forward and not praying forward, and it didn't come by just the grace of God. We actually had to, you know, we had to uh, 
uh, attack the devil and, and do what we had to do. Well, and know? I think what happened for us, the turnaround, was when we realized that the, our marriage wasn't just for our happiness and we were trying so hard to make him to make me happy and me to make him happy and we realized that marriage wasn't to make us happy but to honor God and for us our marriage should be a witness to other people and to impact the the world that through our marriage and once we took ourselves out of that equation and we started doing it to honor God and helping other couples and realized that we needed to have a meaning for our marriage and we had to you know you hear people in the world talk about soulmates mm -hmm. and uh, really there is no such the Bible doesn't talk about a soulmate um, the movies talk about a soulmate you have to cultivate your soulmate you have to um, there was nothing soulful about what we had, other than soul music, right. uh, that we had, you know. And so we had to learn how to pray together and how to, you know, have a re individual relationship with the Lord. We had to learn to get to know Christ better. That's wh where it really all starts. And then the service that we do at the church and worshiping together, going to church no matter what, um, all those things, is how it, that's the spiritual aspect of your marriage. And if you Praise can get that God. part down, then everything else falls into place. And God Praise will just God. bless you like crazy. And we had to learn that uh, people are different. Men are different. Women are different. And in her family, uh, they actually made the bed every day. And in my family, we only made the bed when people were coming over. So when I, when I would come home and the bed was made, I was like, who's coming over tonight? And Sherry would say, nobody. Why? I said, because the bed's made. Because uh, oh, there's all kinds of rules and things, you know, not even, th I mean, we were talking about the spiritual aspect, but there's all kind of just everyday things that you don't know that your family does things. One, his, Richard's family is Hispanic, my family is white, <laughs> and there's a big difference there just on how the culture is and how they do different things. I mean, for a long time, we felt like we were soul, I mean, instead of soulmates, we felt like we were cellmates. <laughs> and, uh, I, needed, I needed parole. <laughs> I felt like I had life. I, I was doing time. Yeah. <laughs> doing and time so, with yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh. Oh my God. Times have changed. Yeah. Times have changed. Amen. Thank yeah. you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That's wonderful. What floor are you in at Lakewood? What times and what days do you have your classes? Uh, every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh -huh. uh, in between the two services. There's an 8.30 service and an 11 a.m. service, and ours is right between the two services. We start about 10.15, and we're in room 3021. And uh, then we also teach a premarital class, and it's called Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. And it's every Sunday at 1240 in room 3024. And they're both on the third floor at Lakewood Church in Houston. Praise God. So you're getting a lot of response on uh, that. Yeah. God has blessed this class. I, I, I mean, it, it, we have standing room only right now. They're moving us to a bigger room just because there's so many people coming. And everybody, it's very transparent. We're not a, you know beat people over the head. We, we right. talk with them. We're, we're, we're very transparent about our marriage. Everybody that's the teacher in that class has had issues that they've gone through in their marriage. And um, we talk about them. We're not afraid. We don't try to pretend like we're you yeah. know, the perfect couple. We talk about it. If we fought on the way to get to church that day, you know, we'll tell them. And, um, but I think because of that transparency, people can say, wow, we're not the only people going through something. And so they, they come and they stay. There's not one marriage I heard John Osteen used to say years ago that doesn't have an argument. And if they say they never did, they're lying. lying. <laughs> well, we heard that, you know, with, that arguing is okay because right. out of argument, conflict, uh, conflict uh, growth happens. Right. Yep. Um, so I would like to say that we have had a lot of growth in our marriage. We have grown marriage. a lot from the <laughs> conflict. Our <laughs> sharpens iron against us. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Well, because people want to sweep stuff under the rug, and if you sweep it under the rug, then it just, you know, gets... You bigger. end up tripping over the rug. You have to deal with stuff. And so if you deal with conflict, then go past it. And as soon as you get through one thing, there's something else right there waiting for you. But, you know, you just keep on keeping on. Praise God. And then are people able, you have your website, right? They could be able to view uh, your teachings and stuff like uh, that? We're, we're working on getting that stuff on there. Start There's like some a stuff library? on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're okay. marriagefanatics.com is, like we said, the website, and then on Facebook. And then we also speak at a lot of different churches and date nights, and we do, we do some comedy. And and we have a lot of like things that, that are coming up yes. here Praise in the near future. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Well, just tell one more time the audience and to invite them to uh, go to your website and your phone number or email and before we exit from the... Okay. The email is thebrights at marriagefanatics.com. The website is marriagefanatics.com. And then we're also on Facebook as The Brights. But I think when you look it up, it has to be facebook.com slash marriagefanatics. And just to let you all know, there is no marriage out there that is in such turmoil. God is up in heaven looking down going, oh, no, I didn't see that coming. What am I going to do with this couple? 
if he can turn our marriage around yeah. and he could make our marriage worth living and to, to glorify him, if he can help us, he can help you. Yeah. It's a great class. We have a lot of fun. Uh, it's a lot like she was saying, my wife was saying, that there, it's, there's, it's openness and honesty. Um, and then we just read uh, the, the word and we just know how Jesus can come in and, and just cleanse your life and, and take you from one level to the next. And yeah. we just you know, invite you to come out. Praise the Lord. You heard it from the Bright's family. They could bring the bright light in your life. Amen. Which is Jesus Christ is the answer to your marriage. And f um, you're more welcome to call me in case you didn't get the information. And I would direct you to the Bright's. They're awesome. Hopefully they come back again. And I'm excited. And if you're out there listening and have not accepted Jesus, right now just say, Jesus, come in my heart. Yes, Father. Forgive me of all my sins, and I believe that you're the Son of God. I confess Jesus is my Lord. And if you said that prayer, write me or call me. We're here for you. And if you're sick and you're going through some crisis or problems, lay your hands on your body and rebuke that sickness. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we rebuke this order in the body, cancer, diabetes, AIDS, whatever. Right now, we command it to go in the, name, in of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, Thank be you. gone in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. You bless those who are listening and heal them, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And remember, next week we'll be back here again and looking forward to hear from you. And if you'd like to be a part of our ministry, to support the cause of winning souls for Jesus, go to my website, www.mfministry.net. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. See Hallelujah. you next week. <laughs> Praise God. This is Evangelist so Michael Fernandez. If you'd like to be a part of our ministry, please call us or go to our website. El si quieres estar parte de ese ministerio, por favor, háblalos 281-685-0542.